you're going to be a web application, and this web application is going to be you as a student, you are present with a list, a drop down list of uh, uh, professors. And then you decide to, okay, let me check this one here. You click on a professor, and then you get the, uh, the course that the professor is teaching. See here in my commode, I open up a file. Let me save that in my uh, document root directory, and which it's right here inside my applications. And uh, where I installed that AMP server, my MAMP. This is the document root directory. I'm going to go to spring 2020. I uh, have then, let me open up a, or create a folder here. I'm going to call that WA web application underscore Ajax. I think time going, we're probably going to have time to uh, introduce you to uh, a fewer code than Ajax, which is called jQuery. We're going to talk about this soon. That's the folder, Ajax, jQuery, create. I'm going to make that file there, all files, format, and you're going to call that guy web application ajax.html. Okay. So HTML, I'm going to go to the head. I'm going to put the title there. And the title is going to be uh, Web Application Using Ajax. I'm going to go to the body here. And the body, let's put an H2 here and repeat that title there. Control Copy, Control V. And it, now here we're going to create here a placeholder. Creating. Let me let me actually call two placeholders here. Placeholders. Create placeholders uh, for for the uh, faculty list and uh, courses. I'm going to create, use a block there, a div, an ID. Let's call this uh, instructor list. And uh, let's give some space here. And uh, we're going to create the second placeholder. Uh, show courses. Oh, show courses. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, uh, use an Ajax, which it, we are working here. This could be like a, a form. We are doing a bunch of things here in, inside of the body. But while we are doing this, we're gonna do this on load. Let's run this jQuery. I'm sorry, this JavaScript. We call here uh, populate instructors. Okay, so we run a function, a JavaScript function. So now we're going to go here and start our script, type text JavaScript. We're going to create that function, populate instructors. Now here, Ajax use an object that every browser has. It's called this object is called here. So we're going to create this object here. Create object. So it's from a class, of course. The same name actually. XML HTTP request. And this is the object. You can think of a communication object, a set of code that allows you to go interact with the server, request things, and the, the server response, send the response back, and so on and so forth. So how to create this? It depends on the, the browser. Right? So if window.xml HTTP request. So all of the browsers, right, except the older 
uh, IE, Internet Explorer. So we create like this. Let's let's call that. Let's give the initial XHR object. And it's just from a class, just XML, ATP request. Else, we go like this, HR object. Let's press enter. So we say here, new active X, big O there, object, in, par in parentheses, Microsoft dot, all capitals now, XML, HTTP. Let me put a comment here. This is it for older IE browsers? Yep. So we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is opening connection to the servers, to the serve the servers servers program that populates. Populate uh, the select element with uh, with uh, with the list of uh, of uh, instructors. Okay, so we're gonna open with the object H H R H object dot open. We're gonna go with the method. You see the method URL. That's those are the two arguments. Actually, there's three arguments. Actually, the first argument is the we're gonna go as get the URL or the program that you are. It could be like you're, you're doing, and then you access a server, you no, know, an outside server, a real physical server there, and then you put the URL up to that the program that was stored there in the server. Okay, so by for us here, we are the server. Okay, we are developing this. Use our own server here. Get the the program you're gonna call get. You're gonna call populate populate select dot php. And uh, the third one is true here. I guess the the uh, without the third argument is by default. True means is uh, really asynchronous. Okay. But that's what the AJAX stands for, eh? Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. The XML is the way we we transfer data from the server to to, to the client. Yeah. All right. So we did that. We opened that. We're not gonna send anything. So we're gonna just take the object, put send null here. We're not gonna send anything. Now we need to check checking for the communication. So we take the object here, dot big here on red state change is equal to a function. And then uh, here's where the, the condition goes. If the object xh are, okay, dot red state for and the object that status 200. I'm just stop for just a briefly here. I mentioned that red state, the communication is, it takes four steps. Start the handshake, make sure it's okay. Start send and so on, four steps. The four is the last one. Now the status here is just a, a HTTP response code. Now if you get 200, it's fine. If the page was sent over, uh, remember sometimes you get 404 because the page is not there, right? But that type of code, and then 200 is, is the perfect one. Right? So if it is there, getting the response, the server's response, and uh, writing it on the placeholder. Now probably here we're gonna get uh, becomes clearer here. We take the location there, right? Document get element by ID. We call that uh, instructor list. Instructor list, capital L, yeah. 
and uh, we're gonna go inside of the page there in HTML and now we get the object that response text or XML it all, all depends the way they you can choose it. now we go, let's get text here and let's work for this guy here populate PHP so we are writing into that place hold let me save this guy here I'm gonna file new new file and I'm gonna again save on that location there uh, I go to applications I save on that in your document root directory so HD Docs spring 2020 we have this folder here and I'm gonna make this all files and we're gonna call that guy populate select all right save here populate PHP and we're gonna do here this guy here and here the first thing we do here just to make sure the the communication is is okay it went through so I'm gonna just send back print hello from server so we are learning this so don't code 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 and then uh, try to figure out in a, in a long series of code where 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 the the areas all right populate this we save that so let's get this page here Oh, not Firefox, why right? Firefox? I don't want to open up things. So let's come in here. I'm viewing browser. All right, I went to browser there. Okay, so we're going to get that. So you should command HTTP colon two forward slash. Up to there is a, a get command. We put the location, right? The location. It's called local host in it. That's the folder and the folder server. Local host. Mine is runs on that port there. And then uh, we delete this up to hdocs. Because the web server takes you all the way up to the document root director. And this, let's remember this guy and preview this. So we got hello from server. Okay. Good. We're on the right track. So the communication went through and everything's fine. So what is the idea here? Well, we just read the, the CSV and populate the select. Okay. And then the user makes me sure that the user, when it clicks on, the, on, the, on one of the lists there, it, it get the courses. Okay, so let's do it. So the first thing here you're going to do is uh, open a CSV file for, for reading. Uh, let's make sure here. Let me make sure that the is this uh, okay. Let me make sure that uh, on the folder that we we create, I have the CSV there. No, no. So let me get this from here. Let me open up another finder here. And let me get this data here. That's, I keep a lot of CSV files here. Um, colleges. This one here. So I'm going to copy that one. And I'm going to put there on our document root inside that folder there. Paste. And let me open this file here so you can take a look. Oh, here, here's the file. So it's a file with the faculty title and the courses. You see there the title and then the courses. Now they all separate by comma. Now sometimes you have a CSV, you get a data set, you know, millions of records. So you have to really write a program to make sure that the file is, that is not corrupted or it doesn't follow a, a pattern. Right? So always, if you are given a, a CS, CSV file, always take a look 
take a look and see if there's anything there. Sometimes you have a, a crazy character there, and then it, it might throw the program off. So you can always take a look. I, I, I already make sure that it's okay. All right, let's leave it this here in case we want to look back at, the, at this file here. Close it here. So you have the CSV file. We're going to open this. We're going to put that into a variable file. We're going to use that off open is a function, PHP function. See the string file name. The file name is, I have a little, what is that? CST underscore faculty dot CSV. Oh, right there. Okay. CST underscore faculty dot CSV. And we open as a read for reading. Remember, I mentioned already you can open as a writing. Okay, so you write into the file. You open the file, right? Uh, we want, we want to create a variable. Remember the file here, the, the first line of the file is a header line. We're not going to use that one there. So let's keep that one. So uh, variable uh, used to skip first line. So I'm going to create this variable here, reading equal to one. Okay, so read that. Uh, before I use a while, a while actually, let's start sending. Let's say here, start sending uh, the select element to client. So I'm going to say here, print select an ID here, let's call, oh, I'm sorry, this here, let's call that faculty list, faculty list, uh, and then on change. So when you click on a, or tap in one of the professors there, that's what I'm going to happen. We're going to call this function here, uh, show courses. Okay, and then we this, that, and this. And as usual, we take the first option and just ask the, the user to select it. Option value, select instructor. No, no value. We just say select an instructor. And we close the option here. Okay. So the next thing, all right, now we're going to loop loop it through the CSV file okay, using fget CSV, which, uh, which reads line by line and then creating, creating an array, an array for each line. Okay, so we're gonna do here while the parents. I'm gonna create this array called row, and is a result of this reading here. Get CSV in parents. You see there resources, the file, right, and so on. So I put here dollar sign file. Now the next thing is the length, and it, it's funny because the length of the line zero. And if you have zero, zero means that the size has no limit. So and actually, that's the way to do it because uh, invariably the, the the size of each line is, it doesn't it, it all it varies. You know? And the next thing, the delimiter. The delimiter is a comma, is a, CS, a CSV, right? And here, make sure this is not equal to false, which means that the end of the line. All right, good. So I'm going to send as the value of the option the courses. So you want instead of uh, uh, have one uh, one travel to the server to get the the faculty name, display the select, and then the, the user click on the select to travel back again to the server, and then look for the the faculty, and then when you find a match, you you get the course and send it back to travel to the server. Let's do just one travel. 
So the server is going to display the list, but the value of the option is going to be gonna courses. So we're going to take the courses. Remember these courses here? So here, for example, for, for a, a Professor Archibald, so we're going to take these courses here, and we're going to send these courses there as the value for Professor Archibald. Uh, so we're going to concatenate, we're going to put a space between the courses. And the last one, we have to make sure that when you read the, the last course, we don't add a comma. Right? It's not a deal, but you have a comma there. People might think, well, is there more courses? Where is the comma hanging there? Right? So we're going to do this comma here. Let me, we need a lot of space here. So here we're going to do this, uh, look, we're going to first uh, uh, array length. So we're going to put here dollar sign, let me call row length. It's just a count of dollar sign the row. And then we're going to loop here for dollar sign index. Now we're going to concatenate the courses. But remember, we, we read the first line. Well, we, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't think we don't, we're not going to do anything yet. The first thing we're going to do, let's keep the first line, right? We're not going to process this line here. This here, faculty, title, and course. This is, a, this is just for, for, for people to understand, to associate the, the data with the, with the title there. Or the header. All right, so let's skip that. Okay, skipping first line. We we said that the first reading is equal one, right? So just to put here if dollar sign reading than one, we do what we're supposed to do here. Let me move those guys out because we're gonna do stuff. Here. Control X, put that inside there. Control V. Now here you can uh, you can set here this else you can set reading to two or add one to reading if you are interested in knowing how many records you just put here reading anything above one right and reading or if you want to again know how many records there you add one you can make two and that's it you skip you always skip the first line. Right? Oh, you always you skip the first line. Eh? So this is here, right? So we're done here. Uh, okay, so here we go. We read that to get the length. We go index. Remember, uh, you are, now we are reading this line here. This line here, the lower is archibald. And if each element now is part of the row. The element of the array dollar sign row. So row the zero. Is the name row of one is instructor row of the two from the the index two and up I, we don't know sometimes just a two or three from two and up that's what we're interested in for the courses so we put it here for index equal two and dollar sign index less than dollar sign row length And go one row at a time. I'm sorry, one row, one index at a time. Sorry. So index plus plus. So two up to the 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 row length, right? Or less than row length. Remember, array. You have three elements of the array. What is the size? Three. What is the index? Zero, one, and two. Right? It's always less than the length. Okay. So come in here. So now we're going to make sure that uh, uh, is it the last element or the last index, eh? the last, okay, let's put element of, of array dollar sign row. Eh? Why? I'm going to concatenate course by course with the comma space, next course, comma space, and when I get the last one, and how to know the last one if you do, do like this, if 
dollar sign index is equal to dollar sign row length minus one, right? So this is the last one, right? Remember, you have it, three elements. What is the size? Three. What is the index? Zero, one, two. So when you are in a two, you are the, this is the last one. So if you take the size three minus one, two, if it two is the two there, so you, you're that's you are in the last element of the of the array. So if that's the one, I'm just gonna do this thing here. Uh, courses. We concatenate that. Remember, this is PHP with the dollar sign row of index without dollar sign index. That's a variable. No sign index. Okay, that's the one. Else, we can we can do here dollar sign courses dot equal we concatenate with the dollar sign row element dollar sign index and we're going to concatenate that with this comma space that so the last one is just the row of the element uh, on that last uh, index okay without that comma here uh, if you just want for completeness right just say here string variable for courses So dollar sign courses equal to yeah. all right good so we do did we got the we can cut out the other course now we are ready to send it ready to send to client the options or the option because we are we are remember we are we skip the line and we are in the, the second record there I should say the first the second right we skip the first the second one we do all this we send it back what are we send now we're gonna print it here let me do this careful here print uh if you just want to you don't really need right I put it here uh instructor is what is the instructor how to get the instructor dollar sign row element what zero right this is just to stress that that uh, the instructor the name is element zero right, of the array so now we're going to print option the value now is the value we're going to send it is a is a bunch of string right so we're going to concatenate that we concatenate that with dollar sign courses and then we concatenate that with the finish with the single quote the option we concatenate that with dollar sign instructor so the user is going to see the name have a list of names but as the user print a uh, print press that, that instructor if you want to see the value of that instructor is the is the course Okay, so this this function here is going to be easy right? to create the show courses here is the JavaScript function. We're going to read the value, right? Document get element by ID. The ID is right here, right? Faculty list dot value. We got the value of that select instructor. So you don't need to travel back again to the server, get the instructor name, and then uh, look through the the file, see if there is a match, and then send it back the course. So it's just one travel, one trip. Okay, let's finish up that course in dollar sign instructor. And then we concatenate that. That's what the user is gonna see. We finish up the, the option here. Is that right here? Yeah, that's that's the end, right? We print. We read it here. Here is what is this here? This is the end of the loop, right? So this here is the end of loop. And then after the end of loop, you have to do one more thing, guys. Because here we, we start to open up the select element. 
we have to send it back to the client, right? The closing. Send the uh, close the clo closing select element to client. So you say print close select, and that. Right. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Make sure that everything's fine. S save this, right? Go back to the Ajax here. Well, at least if we got at least the list, right? Como tab. Ah, here, let's see here. Yeah, we got all the list there, right? If you click here, can did click with nothing here because we haven't worked on that uh, function here show courses so let's work on that function so we have here let me create let me put it here comment here this is the end of populate instructors uh, populate instructor and let's start the function show courses So what is this function going to do? Uh, very simple. Né? You're going to read the value, read the value of the selected instructor. You click that, remember, on change, that's what the well, is event handler. Né? That's the official name of those guys. Né? On mouse and things, event handler. Né? Read the value of the select instructor. So how to read? Put that in a variable. Var, uh, the, the, the value is the, uh, are the courses. Né? So versus document dot get element by ID. We call that faculty list, right? Yeah, faculty capital L. Faculty list dot value. Now, Right, writing courses on the second placeholder, and the second placeholder is this guy here. Right? The idea, the idea is show course. So how to do it? Document dot get element by idea. Uh, show courses. I'm gonna go inter or inner in inter by inner uh, and, and then how to do it we're gonna do a core let's say here uh courses let's go to a paragraph here oh, paragraph here and then uh, we're gonna concatenate that with the courses and uh, we finish that uh, with the paragraph here Let's go here. Como tab. We got one. Let's go. Uh, Tatiana Maluta. Oh God, my Lord, got the whole thing. Oh, where? Who said that index one equal sign? It needs two equal signs, eh? Well, all right. Let's. Uh, you you read it, and you put together the course for that student. I'm sorry, for that instructor. And then you go to the next one, the course is there, you keep it concatenated. So you finish here is, this is the print, this is the else, right? Now, after you've done this, this is the end of the loop. To go back there, just make it courses here. As what? Empty this thing. So this is the, the course now is for the next instructor. I just kept it, in, uh, Concatenate course after course. Save now. That should work. Logically speaking, that should work. All right. Let me just make sure this is here. And uh, let's take a uh, jump, jump All right. Let's make sure that it's it's correct. The jump is three five one three. Look at here. Three five one nine three six. Janus Kuzik. He sits right next to me. Great guy. Three five one one course. 
Janusz Kuzik, yeah, 3523. Right? Hong Lee is the chair, no courses there, right? We can send a message, the same, right? No, not a problem. Right? Tatiana Maliuta, 3504. Let me make sure that it works. Yeah, 3504. You can see the last course, is no, there is no comma there, with the hanging there. All right. Now, okay, we still have time, guys. Yeah, this is not going to take long. Uh, uh, we're going to do the same thing but now with jQuery. Then we're like, why bother with Ajax? Well, that's what I think also. So let's do this. We're going to do this whole uh, first uh, program here, or the first page in, in jQuery. So I'm going to create a new, I'm going to use a, the same PHP, so we don't retype that one there. So I'm gonna put it here, file, new, new file. And I'm gonna save as, save as. And same thing, application, map, htdocs, 2020, uh, Ajax jQuery. So remember that one there, wa underscore Ajax, this is gonna be, well, Gotta change to our files here. So that's gonna be wa underscore jQuery dot HTML. Save. Okay, so this is a jQuery. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste actually. I don't need to retype the whole thing. So I'm gonna do control control copy. And go to jQuery control V here. We're gonna use that body there. Okay, this here. Now here we go. Here, uh, function populate instructor. We don't need the object at all. I'm gonna leave that line there because just to remember the thing here. All that you need here is jQuery. All right, jQuery. Again, jQuery is JavaScript, right? Is used for uh, uh, for several reasons, actually, many reasons. Actually. One of the most common one is for make the page looking very pretty, very fancy, and uh, stands out. Uh, the second one also is using jQuery to do that communication with the server, interact with the server. So how to use jQuery? Two ways. The first way is not the, the most popular one, is uh, you go to jQuery, and download jQuery and install in your, in your machine. The second way is the most popular one, is the one that you use the cloud, okay? So you download from what is it called, what is it called a CDN, the Content Delivery Network. So Google is a content delivery network, Amazon is another one, Yahoo is a bunch of them, right? So how to do, you're gonna, Take that one, I'm gonna put it here a comment. Downloading jQuery from a CDN. Let's go from Google CDN. Content Delivery Network. So how to do it? Let's go to a browser here. And uh, take the map here. And I type that guy there. Uh, jQuery Google. Ah, here from this site here, host the libraries. Go there, and Google there's a bunch of libraries, D3JS, Dojo, a uh, bunch of them. Scroll down until you find jQuery, take the latest version, copy the script here, the whole script, from script to closing script. Control copy, go back to our page, and dump that there, Control V. So it's a, it's a long line, let me minimize so you can see here. There is also jQuery for UI. If you really wanna do a fast things in your web page, you will download jQuery. You can download the mean, and you can download the jQuery uh, UI. So we have jQuery. So what, what are we gonna do? We're gonna skip some of the traditional way to, to do the code. We can do jQuery, 
can be uh, denotated either with the dollar sign with the, the word jQuery. But everybody, because last type, everybody does dollar sign. So we're going to put here, let's see you can see, uh, using Ajax to communicate with server. So we're going to put here dollar sign dot Ajax parentheses and this way. Right? Now some of some of the editor it comes like this. Very common to see this guy here like so, and bring this guy here and put the semicolon there. Okay, let me blow up this guy. So I need to. Uh, the the common way is that uh, is do it. Uh, make sure that the DOM is uh, it, it, it upload the page and it, make sure it's read for JavaScript. You do dollar sign uh, document that read a bunch of things there. Right? And we're gonna cut that that thing. If it's not necessary, why bother? Right? If you're not necessary, don't bother. So we come here. Uh, now we're gonna set setting the parameters for that Ajax. The first one is the URL and this guy there populate select dot PHP comma uh, data type for either text, script, XML, JSON but the default text if you if it is the default text, I don't need to put. It's like the method. There is here type. They don't call method, they call type. The second parameter. And the type is either get or post. But the default is get, so I don't need to put type, right? So uh, data, are we passing data to this? No, nothing. Right? So just say this populate select, gonna send us back the selected element. And then just go to success. Now, this success, it down all of this guy here. Well, we got to open send and that's got all this communication here. Red state and so on. Just success is a function of what the server sending. Let's put this server data. All right. Now what do we do? We're going to write, write the server data. Writing server data or placeholder. Anyway, we're going to send us back. The server data is really what the, the, the populate select going to send, the whole select. Right? Writing server data on placeholder. So you can use Ajax like so. Dollar sign, the place, the location there is a, an ID. So ID, go back to the CSS. ID is referred with the pound sign, right? And the, the placeholder there is called instructor list. Instructor list. And uh, we apply the method HTML to write and put their server data. And that's it. Server data, we come to this. We don't need all this stuff here. Look, all these guys here goes. All this goes away. And you can see here the function is much simpler. Uh, much simpler. A, a, a lot less code in here, right? All that I then need to do again, go to any CDN, download the jQuery, put in your in your web page, and use that method there, Ajax. Right? Yeah, all the communication is all done on that Ajax element. And you put the parameters. If you are passing, you use the data parameter here. Yeah. We're gonna come across that. You know, we're gonna be using jQuery from now from now on, because uh, who wants to type all those codes for Ajax? Yeah. The show the, the function show course is done. Thing that that should be the end of it. Save. Let's get this page here. Promote tab. And again, get the page. HTTP, go to the server, it's called location, uh, lo local host, mine runs on that port, 
and get rid of get rid of uh, everything else up to and including the HT docs, the document root director, and then the jQuery. Remember this preview. Get instructor here. Elizabeth Milonas four seven two four. Let's see here. Elizabeth Milonas yeah four seven two four. Let's go. We got another one here. Make sure it works. Uh, how about the lures? The lures. All right. Watch it. It's a bunch. I got 100, 1204, 2206, and 2309. Okay. So you can see with jQuery, it cuts a lot of coding. And it just basically put the script there and use those guys here. We're going to be using this quite often now, from now on. 